Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Green Flag. I'm your host, Lucas Wacker, and with me, as always, we have Kyle Cushman. And welcome to the second season preview for the upcoming 2021 NASCAR season. We've got the Xfinity Series on deck for today. We recorded the uh, truck series on the previous episode, so make sure you go check that one out before you watch this one. And uh, we also have some interesting news as well. Not not too much. We're going to keep it on the shorter side of things with that Hopefully. Uh, in today's episode. <laughs> yeah, but saying that, though, we do, we do tend to, t- uh, to talk a little bit but uh we've got some fun stuff in store for today's episode but the main thing the xfinity series preview so make sure you stay tuned for that a little bit later on but before we get into all that how are you doing today kyle i'm doing good uh, a lot better than your vancouver connects i gotta say uh because that was ugh, that was not good but no i'm, I'm doing win-win win-win <laughs> hey, you know, it. exactly it's a win-win for you but no i'm i'm doing good excited to talk about the xfinity series here today um i'm a little bit mad though at thor sport for announcing their driver lineup immediately after we do our season preview you know for the truck series and worked out very well for you i gotta say and i'm sure we'll talk about that a bit later in the show but no i'm, I'm doing good <laughs> and finger aside <laughs> yeah i feel you know i think that's a bit of of karma for what <laughs> yeah, happened to me yeah, over the is. last prediction so yeah. we're one on one i don't think there's going to be anything that happens with the xfinity series that we're going to be unaware of I mean, fingers you never crossed. Know. I mean, with the way everything is going nowadays i would not be surprised if something happens before the season starts next week but god forbidding that does not uh, that is not the case we can actually have the actual lineup here and nothing happens between now and the start of the green flag at daytona so We'll jump into the news right off the gate here, and it is uh, an interesting one to say the least. Uh, Ty Dillon will be running and be the first driver in 2311 racing history to drive for the team, and he's going to be doing that in the Clash, eligible from last season to participate in the Clash, so that is why he's going to take the opportunity here. 2311 is going to make him a car. They're going to get the seat molded for him, and he's going to drive a one-off race for the team at the uh, the Bush Clash next Tuesday night on the road course at Daytona. Root Insurance will be the sponsor as well. So he's locked out for that one. Obviously, Ty Dillon has kind of moved over to the Toyota side of things over the offseason. He's going to be running some part-time stuff for the 54 in uh, the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. So there's a bit of a tie there. So it made sense for him to find an no open spot intended. when Bubba Walls. Yeah, no tie, exactly. No tie. That, was, that was good. That was good. Okay. All right. You, 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 you're on to me. All right. Uh, and then uh, obviously Bubba Wallace is not eligible to run the Bush Clash, hence allowing Ty Dillon the opportunity to run for it. So great to see that Ty Dillon's going to actually make some history here for the team. And, you know, maybe 30 years down the line, we're going to look back at this and it's going to be a trivia question. And, you know, how many people will get it wrong? How many people will get it right? Uh, is to be seen but uh i can assure you this we will not be forgetting this one will be interesting to see how ty dylan fares on the daytona road course so what do you make of the move here for 2311 racing to give ty dylan the shot makes a lot of sense here and for starters it's going to be fun to see that 2311 car on track uh, a few days earlier than maybe we anticipated here which is going to be nice but i think the big thing is just getting on track for some testing because we know uh, how little testing and everything goes on nowadays in, in current day NASCAR is going to be extremely tough for that new team to step in and be immediately competitive. So to have somebody like Ty Dillon just kind of sitting there available with kind of no plans or anything like that, who's working with your manufacturer as well to go, hey, you want to hop in a car and run some laps for us so we can get some test data. So in a couple of weeks time, we actually have some stuff to go off of. Like <laughs> it, it's a situation that works out pretty well for everybody involved as well, because Ty Dillon can have this relationship formed with this new team, furthers kind mm-hmm. of the ties here uh, newly with Toyota as well. So it, it's kind of like a win-win scenario here um, and uh, something that I, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on that 23 car as, as I'm sure many people will during that bush clash because uh even though the paint scheme isn't anything spectacular the fact that it's a michael jordan owned team 2311 racing the brand new team it'll be their first ever kind of competitive race even though it's an exhibition so uh we'll save that moniker for the daytona 500 but no i'm, I'm very excited to see them on track uh, now in the bush clash yeah and uh it's gonna be Interesting to see how Ty Dillon's situation unfolds from here. Now we know he's going to be doing some part-time stuff, but you know, maybe down the line they tab him for something more on a long-term basis or a full-time ride. Who knows? But at least he's staying over in that Toyota camp where they seem to be wanting to build something for the future over there, expand, not uh, kind of shrink down as some 
other organizations are doing in the lower series, namely Ford, in terms of their kind of manufacturer situation with teams. But it makes both sense. It makes sense for both parties, like you said, Kyle. And uh, I'm happy that Ty Dillon at least is getting this shot. He's just had such a rough off season the past like seven months. It's just been downhill for him since the the news that uh, Jermaine Racing shutting down. And it is kind of funny so that it ends up being he's going to be the first yeah. one to run the race with the team that took the charter, or I should say, bought the charter from his old team, and he's going to be the first one to race it still anyway. So that's kind of funny too. It's technically the same car because they're doing the owner points from the same yep, team as yep, well. So yep. it, he's, he, it just, it's not like – it's like Ty Dillon never left, really. Just a different uh, first digit on the side of the car. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's basically all that's changed over there. Maybe the manufacturer as well, some personnel. What do you, you know, the, the little things. But Ty Dillon is going to be getting a shot in the Bush Clash. We move on to the next little bit of news here. Justin Haley has been announced to run at least two races for Spire Motorsports. I'm surprised they haven't announced more, but uh, he's going to be running two races in the number 77. Remember, that's the second entry this season, the open entry that they're going to be doing. Not open entry, but the the second car that's going to be having the multiple drivers throughout the, uh, the season. He's going to be running at the Phoenix uh, in March race and the Michigan race, the lone Michigan race there. <laughs> Had to get that, that in. Good to say. Had to get that in there. Feels good to say that. So Justin Haley gets his uh, shot in the cup series. I'm sure we'll see him maybe even a colleague car, maybe throughout the season on the super speedway tracks, if something works out there, but uh, at least he's got some other routes that I predicted him to go to the 77 next season. So, Hopefully this is a little bit of a sign that that can come to fruition because I'm all for one right now on that side of things. But uh, yeah, y- y- do you have anything to add on the uh, the Haley kind of little move here? Just the the only thing is that I still find it strange that he's not running the 500 for them again. The fact that it's Kaz Grala kind of dropping in there, somebody who doesn't really have ties to the organization. Uh, sorry for colleague there uh, doing the 500 because of course Justin Haley well, no, isn't. Mary's doing this. Yeah, Mick I know. Mary's I know. The I know. I'm talking about oh, colleague here. Okay. Okay, what I'm saying you mean. is that it's weird because originally he was planning to run the 500 for Spire before Jamie McMurray came back and they're going to do that Chip Ganassi thing again. So Haley's not running the 500, which is a bit strange to me because he's mm-hmm. so good on super speedways and he's got ties to two organizations running in it and he's going to be running it for neither of them. So, or he's not going to be running it at all, I should say. So, uh, but no, we expect him to be uh, at least one of the main rotation pieces in that second Spire entry. I think we'll see him a lot more often than just those two races this year. I could be wrong. They could go with the rotation of like the Garrett Smithleys and everybody else in that second car. But given the ties that they have there and given what they were talking about in uh, or in lead up to the off season, where they were talking about some candidates for that full-time ride. And they talked about Ross Chastain and they talked about Justin Haley, two guys uh, with colleague at the time that have run races with them and have been competitive at times uh, in, in underfunded equipment. So um, a little bit surprised that it's only been, been the two announced, but I feel like that might be coming down the pipeline as they get the confirmation on different sponsors. Yeah, for sure. I, I would be shocked really if Justin Haley's only running two cup series races for Spire this season, but Remains to be seen if that is the case. Next bit, little bit of news here. The Bush Clash draw has been announced as a, in terms of a time. That's kind of fun. It's going to be Monday on uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Daytona's uh, Super Speedway's Facebook page. So they're going to be doing that streaming online and um, definitely different than what you know we're accustomed to with this draw. It was a big spectacle. We talked about this on the show recently with the trackside days and doing the when it was the Budweiser shootout and just – pulling up a bud bottle and you know whatever's (laughs) whatever number was inside the bottle that was your starting spot but that's long gone and the bush clash is now just a daytona facebook page announcement so i don't know it just devalues it a little bit but then again the whole thing is devalued for me in my opinion this year going to the road course instead of running it on the oval but we'll see how it goes i've got tempered expectations for it as i'm sure you do as well we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves after what we saw last year when they did run it on the uh the actual calendar so yeah just a quick little bit of note there on the bush clash draw 
We move down to the Xfinity Series for the next little bit of news. Jason White. I know you're not familiar with this <laughs> name, Kyle, but uh, I am. He used to be running the gunbroker.com truck in the uh, then Craftsman Truck Series, then into the Camping World Truck Series, as it is now currently called, thank God. Uh, but he's going to be back in the Xfinity Series for a one-off race for RSS Racing in the number 23, a number he's very familiar with, the truck, uh, that the number that he ran the majority of his Truck Series career with. He's going to be running that in the season opener at Daytona. Jason White was always somebody that, you know, was kind of lurking in the in the truck series when he raced, raced full time. He had some good races. I think he had a second place at Bristol once. So he was up there with Kyle Busch battling for the lead. He was just kind of that nuisance sometimes that, that was just nagging right on the leaders. But then also he could have like a 15th place truck and, you know, you never really hear from him in a race. So just kind of all over the place for Jason White, but I'm happy that he's going to be running uh, in the Xfinity series for the season opener. But uh, yeah, Jason White, Kyle, what do you, uh, what do you make of the decision hey you know what any it seems like we're getting a bit of like a renaissance here like some names of like the the past like five to ten years have kind of randomly come back a little bit here now with jason my white. childhood yeah jason white here is the latest one but you got timothy peters who made a spot start last year for stuart friesen's team now he's going to be running full-time with a new truck series team what you also had james busher make a start last year as well so like we mm-hmm. we've had a, a handful oh, of these guys i'm sure there's some other ones as well that i'm forgetting off the top of my head but it's kind of fun uh, just having these names pop back up and and get in the sport and and jason white as you kind of alluded to there uh was a little bit before i started watching kind of the lower series in, in nascar or nationwide or craftsman truck or whatever uh at the time see i i still know what they're called i just i would just what was it before them. nationwide uh bush yes right yeah okay there wasn't anything small in between well done. yes yes come on well done. come on now. yes um, well done I've watched my fair share of Montreal races. Thank you very much. Um, oh, but <laughs> I, I would too. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? I, I'm always down for some of these uh, kind of one-off random uh, kind of weird starters. I'm always down for that. Of course. I just love having these this, this nostalgic period here. It's just so great. I've talked about this on this show. I feel yeah. like I've, it's a platform for me to vent a little bit in terms of what I miss <laughs> from when I watched. We've, t- we've talked about that plenty of times. Hey, you but, boomer. Um, all right okay but you know i'm gonna own up to it i am a boomer when it comes to this stuff back to 2007 oh god i just missed that so much but jason white is a little a small teensy weensy little bit of that and i'm happy to see him back in the xfinity series for a one-off race at daytona now we get into probably the biggest news of the episode kyle something that we were talking about in the previous episode with the truck series and <laughs> i think they we just waited mentioned a his name too days. in the access spot oh Oh, I predicted this. I, I you know, I'm going to give this uh, a mark up on myself for this one because I did say when Thor Sport had this, you know, announcement that they're going to be changing manufacturers but didn't say anything official. It was rumored to be Toyota. I thought Christian Eckes would be going over to Thor Sport and it's not exactly in the way I pictured it, but I'll take <laughs> it nonetheless. Uh, Thor Sport announced its 2021 driver lineup, crew chief lineup and their manufacturer for this season. Toyota has speculated it's going to be going over to that manufacturer from Ford, something they're very familiar with. They ran it a couple of seasons ago. I think it was 2017 yeah, the last it was very time they recent. ran it. Yeah, so they had a brief switch here to Ford, and then they come back to Toyota, back to the uh, their familiar faces over there. And, uh, you know, some interesting little bit of driver shakeup, I guess, in, to an extent. Johnny Sauter is going to be staying with the team, which was probably one that a would be you, you would think if anybody's going to be getting a demotion in, in some respect, that it would be Johnny Sauter yeah. after the season he's just had. Um, but that is not the case. He's going to remain in the number 13 truck. Matt Crafter remains in the 88. That was not going to change. I, I would be, I would have been floored if it was not the case of Matt Crafton was not back full time for the 88. Ben Rhodes will also remain in the 99 truck. He's going to have a crew chief change though. Rich Luch, if I'm saying that correctly, will be the crew chief. He was formerly Sauter's truck chief. And then uh, the big shakeup was at the 98 truck. And I predicted Grant Enfinger as my biggest disappointment for the upcoming season when I thought he was going to be running full time. He's going to be running part-time duties this season. He's going to be splitting the seat with Christian Eckes in the number 98. Enfinger gets 12 raises. Eckes gets 10 for the moment uh, at the moment's time. They're going to have a crew chief change as well. Jerry Oid, uh, 
Jerry Oid, if I'm saying that correctly, Prince will be the crew chief, formerly Crafton's truck chief. So they're making a bit of a shakeup on the uh, the 98 and the 99 for crew chiefs. But the big shakeup overall is at the 98 because they got a new crew chief. And this sh- the shocking announcement with Grant Enfinger, a driver that made it to the championship for this past season, yeah. won his way in at Martinsville. Ran pretty decently at the uh, at the Phoenix finale. Had some different tire strategy, provoking him up into championship contention there late before that late race caution. And he gets the the somewhat boot out of Thor Sport. And Christian Eckes, a guy that got booted out by Chandler Smith over the offseason for KBM, is going to remain in the Toyota stable now. And uh, he's going to be uh, only in there for 10 races. So they're giving Anfinger, I guess, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and not going a, an even split 11-11. But they're going to give him that extra race, uh, probably due to sponsorship or something like that. But Eckes does bring a couple of sponsors with him and has a little bit of funding, more so than maybe Anfinger. And that's what, you know, provoke this move so i'm kind of shocked at at how it all unfolded here i would have never thought that they would do a split if they were ever going to do something i thought it would be a just a straight up swap and someone's gone and someone takes the full time but they're going to be going for the owner's championship now with the the 98 car or the 98 truck excuse me for this season now with these current driving uh current drivers with the team so that should be an interesting storyline to watch. Yeah. The owner's battle isn't really as big of a thing anymore. The 51 truck and the 98 are going to be the big ones that are not running full-time in, in the truck series that are going to be in contention for that if they do make it uh, that far this season. So what do you make of the move here, Kyle? Grant Enfinger gets dropped essentially for Christian Eckes on a part-time basis, and everything else kind of stays the same in terms of drivers and the switch over Toyota. Very strange. Very, very strange to me because – on performance and season long, like Grant Enfinger was the guy representing Thor Sport last year in the championship four, and that's the guy they decide to drop down to a part-time schedule. He was consistent. When you look back to uh, 2019 as well, he, I believe he was regular the regular season, season champ. champion, and the yeah. he didn't have the win there, and that was the main thing for him going out early in the playoffs, but he was the most consistent guy the entire season. Um when you look at his age versus the other guys in the team, he's younger than Matt Kraft and he's younger than Johnny Sauter as well. So doesn't make a lot of sense to me here. I'm going to be honest. Um, I, I would have absolutely uh, either done the part-time schedule with Johnny Sauter or dropped Sauter completely for Eckes. Um, I don't get the decision to have N figure do part-time um, like the, the reasons they say and like the press release and everything and all the media they've done is so that they can have all the focus on winning and everything like that in one truck. And yeah, Eckes and N is going to be a great duo to have for the season, but I, I don't get it in terms of the season long stuff. You would be a more competitive team if you had Eckes and Sauter or even Eckes and Kraft and split starts um, and have N finger run the entire season. So very strange to me. I'd, I'd like to hear more uh, from Enfinger specifically as the season goes along and maybe opens up more about it. But even himself, he, he said that he would have preferred to be in the seat as much as possible. He called it bittersweet. Um, he said that it was a demotion even. So it's very strange to me because Enfinger is clearly um, one of the better or maybe the best driver at Thor sport. Uh, I would hear an argument with Ben Rhodes at this point, maybe Matt Crafton still as well. Um, he's one of the most consistent guys in that series. And he's consistently in the hunt for the championship. As we saw this past season, if things went his way a little bit more, he either would have finished second or maybe would have had a shot at the win uh, in that final race. So I just don't get the move here. It's very, very strange to me. I like the addition of Christian Akis. Don't get me wrong. I just thought that there would have been a way to figure out him getting in there full time and, and not a situation where he's running 10 races and end fingers running the same truck with 12. It's just a very weird situation, especially when you look at their main competitor in GMS and GMS is like, we'll open up a truck for you here. We'll, we'll have you in a few races. Like they'll last year, they, they ran four trucks full time. They had a fifth part time this year. They're going five trucks full time. Uh, I don't understand why Thor Sport wouldn't be able to do a part-time truck for Christian Eckes or open up an entirely new truck for Christian Eckes as well. It's a very strange situation to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be quite the team dynamic over there after that what too. happened at Texas last year with Eckes and Rhodes, the double bird that uh, is famously known, become a great meme. Um, but I'm going to be – completely honest I, I am shocked by this move like I, I can't I can't wrap my head around it I mean 
I didn't think Enfinger was going to have the greatest season, hence my biggest disappointment. <laughs> I don't have him making the playoffs. And but he's literally kind of not playoff into eligible. That one. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll take the one up on that one, I guess, for the truck series. You got yeah, the you're, Denny you're, Hamlin uh, thing. You're, so I'll, you're plus one in the, uh, the season-long predictions. I'm up plus one in the uh, silly season predictions. So. You know, it, it all equals though, out yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is just an interesting move, like, move. Like you said, I'm shocked that they couldn't open up a fifth truck. I know funding's probably a little bit limited with the switch over to Toyota, and they're probably trying to balance the budget in, so, in some respects, as a lot of people are doing during the pandemic. It may like not you, be you financially justifiable. You can do even a part-time fifth truck. Like, it's a bit, yeah. yeah, it's a very weird situation. But I'm happy that Ekus is still getting the shot here. He did not deserve yeah. to be out of a ride, and he's getting a competitive ride at that. He's going to have the opportunity Toyota to win too. a race. Exactly. I think that's a huge uh, that's a huge element to this entire movie is that he's staying with Toyota. Yeah. I think yeah. there's always going to be a lifeline for him to go back up to over to the JGR system, and you know maybe go up to the Xfinity series for them one day if you yeah, know the he, he was dropped by KBM. He wasn't dropped by JGR. He wasn't dropped by Toyota. So. Exactly. I, I think, I, like I've said plenty of times, I think Christian Eckes is the real deal. He just had a bit of an off year, had some circumstances go wrong. But let's not forget, he was the most consistent KBM driver that they've had over the past two seasons. I was going to say, he, and was, he, made the playoffs he and, was better than the results they got from Harrison Burton, Todd Gill, and Raphael Lassard, obviously, last year. So, like, yeah. It is what it is when it comes to this entire silly season drama. Uh, who would have thought that we would be almost a week away from the truck series season starting and we still get a bombshell like <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. It's just crazy. This entire off season from what feels like July last year with all the news, if you want to even go back to March with Blaney's stuff with the contract and how he signed, it's, it's been nonstop for basically an entire calendar year here for what this upcoming season is bringing. And I'm sure that 2022 will be – in similar light. So a uh, big announcement there from Thor sports to do this yeah. entire shift, but um, what, do you have any final thoughts before we move on to the next little bit? Just the, the, everything about this move is strange. The, the timing of it, like a week and like <laughs> eight yeah. days before they're going green in Daytona to start their season. They announced this, um, the move itself, like all of this is just very weird. Yeah, uh, it's probably the the word of the episode weird with uh, with this one. It's just weird. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I just can't get around my mind wrapped around it. Yeah. But uh, it, performance and money pay and money talks in this sport, and yeah. uh, maybe Eckes is bringing that little bit more than what N Finger yeah, can clearly provide this season. Uh, a financial aspect of it as well, and probably that's the main reason why. Um, but yeah, just strange. I'll I'll mix it up this time strange okay uh that's it for the truck series side of things with news but a bit of a bombshell on that side of things especially so late into the off season if you still want to call yeah. that and I'm of course if you want to hear us go more in depth on the truck series stuff we previewed the entire season yes gave out some uh pre-season award type stuff or predictions stuff like surprise driver biggest disappointment all that kind of stuff uh so definitely check that out if you want to hear more about it and hear me be extremely wrong about grant Enfinger. Well, I would go back and listen to that. That sounds like a good <laughs> idea. I, it All sounds right, while like you a fun, do that, I'll episode. go watch the 7-3 highlights. How about that? <laughs> okay. Oh, I could go watch them too. I don't care. Exactly. Uh, win-win. So. It's a win-win for me uh, kind of uh. right now. But uh, like Kyle said, we've got the uh, categories, which we'll talk about here in a second with the Xfinity series. But before we get into that preview, we go down to IndyCar with a bit of news that we talked about rumored that was uh, on last week's episode. It is now official. Roman Grosjean will run only the road courses and street courses in IndyCar this season in the number 51 for Dale Coyne Racing, partnered with Rick Ware Racing. Um, he's going to be running the the road courses. He's not going to be running the ovals. So, you know, he, he's not 100% sure on Gateway yet because of the speeds that are a little bit lower on that one. But the Indy 500 is out for Romain Grosjean. And you understand completely why after what he's gone through these past couple of months with the wreck in Bahrain and how the recovery is going. He's doing well. He's had the surgeries and everything. His hands are healing nicely, the doctors say. So we're wishing Roman Grosjean all the best on his road to recovery here in time for the season to start. Um, I guess it is April. It, is it April? I guess now this season with, with IndyCar uh, yeah. or is it late March? I think so. No, yeah, I think it is April now. Yeah, it's uh, weird scheduling here for IndyCar. It's going to be pretty – compact as the season moves along but Roman Grosjean like I said he's going to be racing for the rookie of the year honors as well against the likes of 
Guess, get this, Jimmy Johnson <laughs> and Scott McLaughlin. What a rookie class this is going to be for IndyCar oh, this man. season. And McLaughlin's running full-time. Jimmy Johnson is following a similar schedule here with Romain Grosjean. Yeah. I'm not going to be doing the ovals, road courses, and street courses for the seven-time Cup Series champion. Uh, so going to be quite the rookie battle. And you would never think that these guys would be rookies anymore, but they <laughs> definitely aren't. Uh, Scott McLaughlin, I don't know how old he is uh, right I, now. I but, believe um, he's late. 20s but I'll, uh, he's the youngest of the three so yeah jimmy johnson I'll, I'll in his 40s and uh roman so is there you go 20 okay yeah so he's he's a little bit younger than i maybe would have thought but uh yeah very interesting rookie of the year lineup definitely not the xfinity series rookie of the year lineup this is big time stuff here caliber big caliber drivers across yeah. three different motor sports sports cars NASCAR and Formula One, like you can't get much better than this. And IndyCar has basically got an all-star lineup over there this upcoming year. What a what an announcement here for Roman Grosjean. So happy that he can confirm something for this season. Going to be coming over to the States as well. So that's a big shift for his entire family, I'm sure, to come over here during these difficult times. So credit to them on, you know, getting this entire thing put together in time for the season. And then as well with the uh, kind of Dale Coyne Racing and Rick Ware Racing uh, announcements, Cody Ware will also do some IndyCar stuff for the team in 2021. More details will be uh, added later on. But the big thing here, Roman Grosjean, Kyle, so happy for him that he's going to be in IndyCar this upcoming season. Yeah, it's awesome uh, to see him return to motorsports, to come over to IndyCar uh, is fantastic. Um, it's super, super fun. I'm still hoping that we can get Kevin Magnuson over to the IndyCar side in a year's time with Chip Ganassi and we can have both of those Haas boys come over to North America after their F1 Crazy. careers, which would be kind of funny of a storyline. But uh, no, this is just awesome and it doesn't matter to me if he finishes last every single race the fact that he's coming over here and still giving it a shot it deserves a lot of props because it would have been very easy for him to have that accident with the amount of money I'm sure that he's made over his career to just go you know what I'm done and nobody would have blamed him whatsoever for it uh, and instead no he's way. coming over here he's taking a new challenge with a new car in a very very competitive series with basically a new team as well. It's Dale Coin Racing, but it's with Rick Ware Racing. And Rick Ware hasn't had a full-time indie or majority of schedule entry in IndyCar yet. Uh, they've run the Indy 500, but nothing other than that. So uh, into new waters as well for the team and everything involved. And uh, it takes a lot of guts to go and do that, especially after everything that's happened to him in the past year. So very excited to see what he can do. Um, in terms of competitive level, I really don't know what to expect because it is a guy who's coming over from Formula One. Um, but it is Dale Coyne Racing, which is a mid-pack team. And we've seen them kind of go up and down the grid at times. We've seen them on ovals look good with Ferrucci, on road courses last year specifically, look good at times with Alex Pillow. Uh, we're really solid in years past with Sebastian Bourdais. I don't really know what, what the expectation, uh, expectation level should be for Grosjean in year one, but just the fact that he's getting out on track in the first place is going to be fantastic. Yeah, and like you said in his press release and, and with the media uh, today, he, he took a step back and he realized what's important in yeah. life. And that was his family and being there with his kids and putting himself at risk on the ovals is just too much for him right now. And I can't blame the guy. I would feel the exact same way. The fact that he's getting back behind the wheel of a race car is, is a feat in itself. So uh, props to him on it's a completely different discipline that. as well for him on the ovals. Like there's no incentive for him to try it out. Exactly. And there's no, not many ovals on the calendar anyway. So he's getting basically a full season's length minus three races on the ovals. I think it is for the entire season. So it's not too bad four. at the end of the day Four three, is it three four? tracks, four races Four. Yeah. Okay. Right. They got the double header, right? Yeah. At Texas. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, makes total sense in that regard. And we're going to be very intrigued by this rookie of the year battle throughout the it's entire gonna be season. Fun. You'd imagine Scott McLaughlin would edge him out just based off of being there for the whole season, but yeah. you never know. Maybe we can get some shock <laughs> results here from Jimmy Johnson and Roman Grosjean uh, and uh, spice things up there. So very interesting to see how that all nuts, plays man. out. We got a V8 supercars, multi-time champion. We've got NASCAR seven time champion. And we've got a Formula One veteran all in one series as rookies. Oh, like, you think this what is an all-star race? Yeah, that's putting it lightly, man. An all-star race for sure. It's it's bonkers. And then that's not even including like the the names that are already in IndyCar. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be plenty of Ericsson and Grosjean jokes throughout the year. 
Um, but then you got like obviously oh, your yeah. your mainstays in IndyCar itself, like Dixon, like Newgard, and it's oh, it's going to be such a fun year. Yeah, I can't wait for that to get underway, and uh, we got quite a bit of time before that actually yeah. kicks off. But Dude, uh, I'm sure we'll be sustained with other happen. stuff because with this grid, oh, 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 come on. I would love to see. I can't wait for Jimmy Johnson to be on the streets of Toronto. I got to be completely honest. Like, I think that's going to be the main thing I'm going to be looking for when it comes to IndyCar this season. Uh, the Indy 500, it's great, but I think having these legends be on the streets of Toronto is uh, going to be basically the Indy 500 for us Canadians up here. So, <laughs> pretty cool stuff for, for Romain Grosjean. Um, do you have any final thoughts with him before we move on to the final little bit of news? Yeah, just mad props to the guy because there's – probably 99% of people in the world that go through what he went through and would be just like, I'm done. And he's part of that 1%. He, it's the race car driver in him. And I cannot wait to cheer him on at Barber Motorsports Park in the IndyCar uh, season opener on, I believe, April 18th. Yeah. And they got the uh, the season pushed back a week. Let's not forget that as well. It's debuting on the big NBC, NBC too. So. Exactly. So we're uh, all set to go. And quickly on NBC as well, I think uh, they're going to be doing some qualifying for the Cup Series later on this season on the Peacock app. Yeah. So make sure you kind of, if you're in the States and stuff, make sure you watch that on there uh, when, when they actually do have qualifying. <laughs> yep. Um, but uh, yeah. All like the final little bit of they have that this year. <laughs> Basically, the final little bit of news in today's episode before we get into the Xfinity Series preview goes over to the SRX Superstar oh, yeah. Racing Experience. Marco Andretti has been named as the next driver to that uh, series for this upcoming year on CBS Sports. Uh, he's taking that step back. Let's not forget that for IndyCar this season from uh, Andretti Autosport. So. He's not going to be running the full-time schedule. He may not be running any races at all besides the Indy 500. So we'll see on that, but he's going to be doing this over the summer months. Uh, so that's a pretty cool name to add an Andretti to the field. So it always comes with a little bit of uh, nostalgia and some history with it. Maybe not with Marco himself, but you know, just that last name is pretty cool to have a part of that. So they're having some really big names, a part of this series. And I'm sure that they're not done announcing some people as of yet. I think there may be a couple of others that there's uh, some rumors on how they might do like this all-star car with some having some current legends amongst different series come over and do a one-off race or something like that. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that side of things. But Marco Andretti, what do you make of him coming over here for uh, the uh, SRX racing series? Yeah, he uh, he talked about in that statement when he said that he was going to be stepping back and he said that he wanted to try some different stuff. And he pointed yeah. mainly to sports car racing in that because uh, there's some family ties to that as well. But SRX is definitely something different. There's IndyCar ties to some of the drivers there in the series uh, already so there's going to be some familiar faces for him there and it's yeah it's something different to go out and try and uh, for somebody that uh, has kind of had a tough go of things the last couple of seasons here uh, it seems like he's taken the step back from IndyCar just going to do the Indy 500 the, the race that he really cares about um, and is just trying to find and, and reinvigorate kind of his interest level here in motorsports and hopefully SRX can do that for him because SRX is a, a great thing for whether it's drivers uh, who have since retired who still want to have that competitive uh, or get that competitive itch um, or people like Marco Andretti here who are kind of just entering that next phase of their career and still have something else to do here. Yeah, like you said, he's looking for other things, and this is a perfect opportunity for yeah. him to try something new. Going to be on dirt as well at some point, so I'm sure that will be a little bit of an out-of-body experience for, <laughs> for him. Uh, but uh, going to be a fun, uh, just serious to watch over the summer, just like basically just six the weeks. The names they have just in that are stars. ridiculous, man. Like, I sometimes I forget some of the name value. Like, Mark Webber is going to be in this. Like, what? Yeah, we're going to have quite the lineup. Racing this year yeah. has got so much potential, and uh, we're, we've got you covered oh, yeah. here at the green oh, yeah. flag. So make sure you stay with, stay tuned <clears throat> with us for the entire season. But that's all the news and notes that I've got for today's episode. It's time to get into the Xfinity Series 2021 season preview. Maybe not as yeah, options for not this as one. Not as crazy as the truck series. And to be fair, no, not much not. is. But. No, it's not as deep in terms of talent and, and uh, high-profile rides as the truck series. And even for the cup series as well with yeah. the expanded 16 drivers there. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in that regard. But for 12, 12 drivers for the Xfinity series here. So I'll give you a reminder here on the categories before we get into yeah. what the schedule looks like for this season. Most wins, surprise driver of the year. Biggest disappointment, bounce back driver of the year, rookie of the year, regular season champion, 
playoff drivers. So we're going to list all 12 who we think are going to be making the playoffs, the championship four, who's going to be making that race in Phoenix come season's end, and who is going to be the 2021 Xfinity Series champion. We've got the Cup Series one up next on the next episode, so make sure you come back for that one. But today, it's just the Xfinity Series for this one. And uh, we'll look at the schedule before we get into the categories here. And uh, it starts off... In Daytona, uh, no surprise there. It's going to be there <laughs> next uh, Saturday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern on FS1. So going to be a great race, as always is, for the season opener at Daytona, especially for the Xfinity Series. They've had marvelous finishes there and some memorable ones with crashes that, you know, Reddick's really Sadler. take your breath yeah. away. Exactly. And some photo finishes. So we're going to be, uh, I'm sure, nothing uh, less than that to start off the season for this uh, Xfinity Series uh, 2021 calendar year. And then we go into the Daytona Road Course uh, the next weekend after that, following all three series there. And then they go to Homestead Miami Speedway for the next one, then Las Vegas and Phoenix for their West Coast stint early on in the year. Remember, no Auto Club Speedway as well. Uh, that's been dropped for the Daytona Road Course. Sad face on that one. Um, but then we go to Atlanta after Phoenix on March 20th. Then we get a uh, couple of weeks off there to go before we get into Martinsville on April 9th. Then another week off there. They go to Talladega Super Speedway on April 24th. Then they take another week off here. They've got uh, Darlington on uh, for the Mother's Day kind of weekend there on uh, May 8th. Then Dover, Circuit of the Americas makes its debut, as we talked about before as well. They're going to be back. Uh, it's the first time for this uh, these series on this track, so that's going to be fun to watch for sure. Uh, to be determined on the amount of laps for that one as well. Then we go to Charlotte on the Memorial Day weekend, May 29th. Then the Mid-Ohio uh, road course race that is typically on the Xfinity Series calendar. Like, remember, the Cup Series is not going to that one this season. That is uh, This is kind of the exception for the Xfinity Series on that end. Then we've got Texas Motor Speedway. Nashville Super Speedway as well. They're going to be on the Xfinity Series calendar. Pocono on June 27th. Then they go to Road America for that doubleheader weekend with the Cup Series on July the 3rd and 4th for uh, the big American celebration with the uh, July 4th weekend. Then they go to Atlanta on July 10th. New Hampshire on July 17th. And then they get that uh, summer break for the Olympics. Fingers crossed that does happen uh, over the the summer months. And then they go to Watkins Glen after the two-week break on August 7th. Uh, That's going to be a great race. I can't wait for Watkins Glen to be back on the Xfinity calendar. Then Indianapolis Road Course returns once again this season for the Xfinity Series. Michigan, one-off date. And then uh, we go to the Daytona International Speedway on August 27th, Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol. Remember, that is the opening for the Cup Series playoffs. That is not the case for the Xfinity Series. None of those are playoff races. Bristol is the regular season finale for that series before they get into the playoffs on September 25th at Las Vegas Motor Speedway with Talladega and the Charlotte Road Course as the three races in that opening round. Then we move on to the round of eight with Texas Motor Speedway, Kansas Speedway and Martinsville Speedway is back on the Xfinity Series calendar here once again on April, on August uh, 30th. And then we end it all on November 6th in Phoenix once again as the championship finale. So that's what the schedule is looking like. Not too many changes in terms of the Xfinity Series this season, similar to what we had last year, except for a couple of races where they're going to be added, like the Cup Series, like Nashville specifically. When you look at that, and it's nice to see Martinsville get another shot here as uh, that race was pretty incredible when they, uh, they raced there this past season. So any, uh, any races that before we get into the categories, any races that you're looking forward to for, on the Xfinity Series side of things? Yeah, just off the top of my head, I think the, the first one that comes to mind is that first Martinsville race because we're going to get Dale Jr. back in that one. That's going to be the Potentially, one. Potentially, that's not confirmed. Not confirmed, not confirmed, but he's said multiple times that that's the race that he wants to run. So we would expect him. So as, assuming that he's going to be in the field for that one, that's going to be really fun to see. Um, other than that, uh, Watkins Glen, of course, I love that track so much. Circuit of the Americas, just in general. Uh, just kind of some of the uh, the new stuff because – the schedule isn't anything spectacular. It's very similar to the Cup Series one. We talked about it when it was first announced. 
um, that we were hoping for uh, a, a lot more differences in it. But uh, with the schedule we have, it is still a pretty damn good schedule. Um, if it is mirroring the Cup Series 1 and the Cup Series 1 looks really good. So, um, yeah, uh, I think those are probably the, the couple that are on my short list, of course. Just your, your usuals, like the super speedways and everything like that, of course, are going to be up there as well. But those are kind of the, the couple regular season ones that come to mind. And remember, no Bristol Dirt for the Xfinity Series yep. as well. They are not on that uh, beast Just the of one a track that race. they're doing. Yeah, one Bristol race for the Xfinity Series. Bravo, bravo on that <laughs> call. Um, yeah, we're not going to harp on that too much until it comes time for the Bristol Dirt weekend, and we will definitely have our thoughts oh, known that show is as to be what a we think. Fire. Oh, oh God. Oh, man. I can't wait. I cannot wait for that Ugh. one. But let's get into the Xfinity Series preview, Kyle. We've got let's the most it. wins category to kick it off, and we're going to say how many wins the driver is going to get this season as well. I threw you for a bit of a loop on the last episode with that one, but I'm pretty sure you've got it prepped for this one. Um, do you want to kick things off with this one then? Sure. Uh, winning is driver. Okay. I went with boring with this one, and I feel like it's an easy pick for this one unless – this, ser- this season goes kind of way off bonkers. the rails or bonkers or whatever crazy word you want to describe it. Austin Sindrick, he's the guy this year. Uh, he-, he was the guy last year to a certain extent, and his running mate in Chase Briscoe isn't even returning to the field. He's got the, the show to himself, essentially, and it's going to be up to everybody else to kind of try and match him this season. I think he's going to have a spectacular season, which we'll probably talk about multiple times as we preview this season. But I've got Austin Sindrick as my winningest driver of the year. But I think the more interesting part of it is the win total here. And I think that's the more interesting. Obviously, Chase Briscoe last year had nine. Sindrick had six. So I'm going Sindrick with eight. I don't think he's going to quite reach those totals that Briscoe did. I thought about giving him that magic double digit 10 number, but when I'm looking at the the rest of the field here, I think there's going to be some internal progression from some of the people returning here. And there are still a couple of veterans that are returning to the series as well. So I don't think it's going to be quite as kind of dominant as it was between Briscoe and Cendric last year. I think Cendric is still going to lead the way this year, but the rest of the field, I think takes a jump up in terms of overall with Almondinger running every race with Hemrick returning with Jeb Burton running every single race. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent in this series. Once again, last year was kind of a little bit top heavy. It's a lot more spread out. There's a lot more this season, but I, I still think Cendric is going to run away with things at the top end. Yeah, I've got Cindric winning uh, the most races in the Xfinity Series this season as well. What's your magic number, For all the though? mentions, uh, my magic number, it's seven. I went seven. with seven okay. for Cindric. Okay. So I, I went similar, uh, a similar line of thinking as as you did there with, I think, the competition level on the road courses as well with Almendinger running a full schedule. Yep. I think that's going to take away some races from Cindric this season. They're going to go head-to-head. Maybe they take each other out on one of the occasions. I don't know. Uh, it would be crazy to think that that would happen, but it's definitely not far from the realm of possibility. But there, I just think Almondinger is going to take away maybe one or two on the road courses if he could, could be more than that. But then I think Cindric gets a little bit more on top of his oval stuff this yeah. season instead of having the Kentucky back-to-back wins there on the uh, on the two week two two races there. And then you know he he won at Texas based off of Kyle's. Um, I guess disqualification there in the Texas race. So, so there was a couple of wins there last season on the mile and a half that were kind of interesting, but I think he's going to recover on that and he's going to get a little bit more consistency on the mile and a half and break through a little bit more on, on that. And he's got the experience now. He's got a whole season under his belt with, uh, with team Penske. This is his third full-time season with the team now. So he's definitely in tune with what they've got going on over there. His final yeah. season in the Xfinity series as well. He's going to go out uh, with a cup like experience a man. too. Like, yeah, he's going to be a man on a mission this season. I think he's yeah. going to get. He knows he's already wins. got that cup, right? It's already locked in. So pressure's off. Yeah. Pressure's yeah. off. He can just go for the championship. Um, he'll most likely be in championship form come the season's end and be in championship contention as well. Yeah. So Austin Sindrick gets the uh, the obvious vote here with most wins on this season. I would be interested to see if he doesn't actually. Who would it be? Because when I look at the list of names, yeah. I don't know who would actually challenge him in terms of that because I feel like Sindrick may be the most 
well-rounded driver based off of the road courses with the amount that we have this year. And uh, as well, mile and a half. So I think he's got a, a decent uh, setup underneath him that he can uh, do some pretty good stuff there. Out, right. So and this is the old Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney car that won so many races for the yeah. owner's title. Yeah. And uh, you know, Austin Cindric is on the way, his way to cup. So you'd expect similar things in that regard from that team. So let's move on to the next one here. Surprise driver of the season. You went first for the last one. Okay. I'll go for this one. I'm going with Ryan C mm. this season for the surprise driver of the year. I think a lot of people are may overlook him this season just based off of some of the bigger teams uh, filling out their lineups more. RCR returning to the Xfinity Series on a full time basis with Mike Schneider. And that looked that that move over to Ford maybe a little bit overlooked for that entire team over there for Ryan C Racing. And I think that he can maybe break through and get that first win potentially this season. I'm not going to say that he will, but I think there is something on the cards for Ryan Sieg. The, the pitch strategy that they pulled off last season, I think they're going to have to do something similar to that on occasion this season to compensate for the lack of speed that they may have. Uh, but they're going to have a lot of resources from Ford this season. They're going to only have the 22, the uh, 39 now, and the 98 in terms of Fords over there in the Xfinity Series. And that's going to be a huge boost when you look at what the 98 and the 22 had in terms of performance last season and I'm sure that they'll continue to keep that success up this season. So I'm going to go with Ryan Seek as my su uh, surprise driver of the year. I originally had Ryan Seek's name written down, uh, oh. and so I like your way of thinking here. But during the show, I decided to, to mix things up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go with a guy that I've talked about a decent amount on this show. In fact, we were doing a show when he went out and won his first race in the truck series. I'm talking about Sam Mayor, I think he's going to oh, show up to Junior whoa. Motorsports halfway through the season. When he turns 18, he's a 2003 birthday, which is insane to say. Um, but I think this kid is legit. I think he's the best prospect in NASCAR right now. I think he's going to step into that team, and I think he's going to be a legitimate contender right away. I think he's going to uh, kind of – we've seen that eight car or the rotation car uh, for Junior Motorsports be a little bit hit or miss – a lot of bad luck last season when Jeb Burton and Daniel Hemrick were running the show there. Um, I don't know what to expect for uh, what to expect for Josh Berry. He might be the surprise guy at the end of the season when we I'm look really at him the first half. I'm excited to see what he can do. But uh, I think Sam Mayer is going to show up and open some eyes. I think he's going to be a significant player come the 2022 Xfinity Series season when he goes full time because he's 18 years old. But Starting the year mm -hmm. 17, he's going to take over that eight car halfway through the year when he turns 18 in June, I think it is. Yeah, at the end of June there. Um, and I think he's going to show up right away. So I think Sam Mayer is going to uh, open some eyes and he's my pick for surprise driver of the year. That's a great pick, Kyle. I gotta be completely honest. Uh, I would have never really thought to look at the part-time guys really for that category. I didn't until but we started the show. So <laughs> interesting. Uh, but Sam Mayer, like you said, he's definitely in contention, if not the the best prospect in NASCAR. So big things to come for this young guy, much younger than the two of us already. So that's pretty crazy to say. <laughs> I don't but, even uh, want to talk about it. <laughs> we won't. Let's just uh, move on to the next category here. You've got uh, you're up first with the biggest disappointment of 2021. The, the uh, award that nobody really wants. Yes, that's right. And um, before we started the show, I you uh, oh uh, did he make <laughs> another change? No, 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 no. Before we started okay. the show, we we were mentioning the the list of awards or awards right. predictions, whatever. And you, I forgot who I had written down for my disappointment. And I looked down at it and it was like, oh yeah, and and. Um, it might be low hanging fruit, but for me, it's got to be Riley Herbst. He's taking over essentially the top car here, a car that won nine races last season with Chase Briscoe. Previous to that, when Cole Custer was still down in, in the Xfinity series, he, uh, he was multi-time winner championship, uh, cal uh, caliber driver in Xfinity. And I just don't see that from Riley Herbst. We saw it, some flashes at times uh, with Joe Gibbs racing last year, but um, I, I just don't think that he's that caliber of driver to deserve uh, this kind of caliber of seat, especially when you look at some of the other names uh, that are in and around uh, as top prospects in NASCAR that maybe don't have this caliber of seat. Um, last year, it was really rough going. He finished 12th overall. He was beaten by Brandon Brown and Ryan Sieg in the playoffs, which is something that you should not be saying when you're a Joe Gibbs driver. For much of the season, in fact, Ryan Sieg was ahead of him or close to him on points. Uh, 
on the entire season, which is, again, something you should not be saying about somebody who's driving a car for Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, he brings a lot of money. He brings a lot of sponsorship. That's why he's taking over at Stuart Haas here as Ford didn't really have anybody on the prospect pipeline to step into that seat with, uh, with Chase Briscoe making the jump. I just think that he's going to be nowhere near the heights that Chase Briscoe reached last year. And especially when I look at the increase in, in kind of talent here with uh, Daniel Hemrick stepping into that 18 that he's leaving behind with stuff like AJ Allmendinger stepping into a full-time seat. I just don't think it's going to be great for him this season. So Riley Herbst is my pick for biggest disappointment. Interesting. Interesting. And, and it's a, yeah, it's a bit of an easy pick there because I don't think people have expectations for him, but when I look at the 98, it was essentially the top car last year. And I don't think Herbst is going to be anywhere near that. Okay. Fair enough. I think mine is going to really shock some people here with my biggest I'm excited for this one here. Because I had Grant Enfinger as my biggest disappointment for the truck series, and that was a huge, ballsy risk. That and it immediately kind of paid, paid off. off so. And, I, you know, I should have gone and got a lottery ticket. But this one, I think, is even bolder in terms of biggest Who disappointment. Are you going with? And, and it's someone you just mentioned there, and it's going to come as a big shock here. It's going to be Daniel Hemrick for me as biggest wow. disappointment this season. Wow. This guy has never won in the top three flights of motorsports in the NASCAR series. He's never won in the trucks, never won in the Xfinity series, and never won in the Cup series in his one-off season there with RCR before getting demoted. Rightly so for Dan T Tyler Reddick, who's just gone up there and showed him up. He didn't win a race with junior motorsports equipment last year when he was doing the part-time stuff came on a little bit strong later on in the season, but he's been so bit by bad luck and super inconsistent. And I think that kind of translates over here to Joe Gibbs racing. That 18 car has been a little bit off Riley Herbst last season. I just, I just get a bad sense that Daniel Hamrick may not have, he may win a race or something like that, but I don't think he's going to be as great as what people are making him out to be with getting that 18 ride. I think that 54 car is where they're going to be putting the resources in for that all-star car. The 18 is, is not what it used to be in terms of being that car that Kyle Busch ran and Joey Logano ran when he was over there. Danny Hamlin, when he ran there, you know, all these guys that ran for that 18 car, Christopher Bell as well, when he did some part-time stuff, those guys ran in that 18 car, but those races are resources have it since shifted to the 54 and I think that 18 car with Daniel Hamrick he hasn't proven to me whatsoever over his couple of years in this sport that he is capable of winning races and I think that maybe translates over to this season I could see him getting maybe one two wins at max for me for Dan Daniel Hamrick this season just based off of the competition that he's around as well I think you're going to find that Daniel Hamrick isn't as good of a driver as what people have been saying that he could potentially be. And if you haven't won in the three flights of motorsports in NASCAR and you've made it to the cup series and made it through the Xfinity series and you haven't won, there's something wrong with that. And I think that people are going to be seeing the true signs of Daniel Hamrick here this season. So I'm going with him as my biggest disappointment. Wow. Okay. I wasn't prepared for that one. That one is extremely bold because yeah, uh, I am one of those people that's a bit higher on Daniel Hamrick coming into the season. I don't think that Hamrick is a Cup Series caliber driver. I think that he's a guy that uh, should be in Xfinity or in trucks as kind of a, a guy that stays at the lower levels but does extremely well in those. And, yes, he doesn't have the wins. But especially looking back to 2018 with Richard Childress there, like the guy had the most points at the end of the season, uh, even with Cole Custer in the field, with Christopher Bell, with Justin Allgaier, with Elliot Sather, with, Tyler, with Tyler Reddick. At the end of the season, he was the most consistent guy that season. Um, and, yes, the big thing for him is that he doesn't have – that high end. He doesn't have that race winning ability that he's shown yet, but he's consistently a top five guy. And I think after how bad that RCR rookie season was in cup, I think it took him a few races to kind of get that mojo back with junior motorsports. And we saw with that four race stretch come the end of the season, four straight top fives there at the end of the year. I think that coming into Joe Gibbs racing this year in the 18, it's a competitive team. I really like him stepping into that team. I, I don't know whether he gets that first win, but I like him to be extremely consistent, and I think he's going to have a strong year. I even thought about potentially tossing him in my championship four. I didn't go that far, which is a little bit of a spoiler going ahead. But, um, yeah, very bold pick on your end, I got to say. Yeah, and – I, I don't know. I just had a feeling about it that – Hey, you know what? Your last go swing worked, my God so. on it. I'm going with my gut on this one, but he could definitely prove me wrong. And mm – -hmm. 
I don't know. I, I feel like he could be the Ross Chastain of this season. I think because I look at Ross Chastain last season, and I was really disappointed by him not winning a race last year. And But he was super consistent. I think that's kind of similar to what Daniel Hemrick could be. He could be super consistent, but I need to yeah. see a win at Joe Gibbs Racing for me to prove that he's not a disappointment for me this season. If he does win a couple of races, three, four races, five, who knows, then, of course, he's not the biggest disappointment of the season. He's done a miraculous job over there for Joe Gibbs Racing. But if he does what Ross Chastain does for him, for, for what Ross, Ch- Ross Chastain did last season for uh, – Hemrick this season, then I'm going to look at him, look at him in similar light as to what I saw Chastain, and I'm going to assume that that's a disappointment on my end that he's not winning a race in Joe Gibbs Racing equipment. That's got to be the goal. His teammates will. It's got to right? be the goal. So, so that's what I'm putting it down to. And I think with the competition right. level, no, no, Gregson, Harrison Burton, Almendinger, Allgaier, Cindric, there is potential that he may go winless and. Very real situation where he might go winless. Never know. Yeah. Never know. I like know. the swing though. I like the swing. I never thought I would have the 18 Joe Gibbs racing car as the biggest disappointment, but I just wait till we get into our cup series preview. <laughs> no, don't even Uh-oh. don't even with me. Uh. All right, let's move into the next category here. Bounce back driver of the year. I'll take this one. You're going to not like this one either. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> wait, I'm not going to like your bounce back. No, you're not going to like my bounce back driver of the okay. year. Cause it's, it's your biggest disappointment of the year. I'm oh, saying Ronnie God. Hurst bounces back this season. Wow. I'm, Okay, is this, I, is this have, Lucas Wacker I'm talking to? Like, is this the right guy is. sitting in the chair? Okay. It is, okay. and I think Riley Herbst could be someone that could sneak under the radar. I have more faith in Riley Herbst winning a race than I do Daniel Hammer. I uh, that's heavily my whole disagree. Take. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. But Riley Herbst had moments last. I have more season. faith in Ryan Sieg winning a race than I do uh, Riley Herbst. Wow. wow, that's a that's a bold statement. I think that '98 car is pretty special and i think riley herbs is actually he's not a great he's not a top end driver okay but he's not a bad driver is what people make him out to be he had a rough season last year there's the numbers everything goes against that he's just not up to what the standard should be of what the caliber of right he's in but I have a feeling that Riley Herbst could surprise some people this season. He could win a race maybe two but that's as far as I'm going with him but in terms of bouncing back from a poor last year, when I look at the names that he was around last year that kind of disappointed, Riley Herb stands out to me as the one that is definitely due for a bounce back. And I think he got taken out a lot of times last season, maybe sometimes by his own doing, but also just some guys being impatient with him and just booting him out of the way. Noah Gregson at Texas, like that was just uncalled <laughs> for. And Herb just got taken out so early on in the race, but he actually looked like he was running pretty well there. And then the, day, uh, the Charlotte Roval as well. He looked pretty strong there before the entire thing with Gregson. So as long as he can keep his nose clean this season, I think another year under his belt in the Xfinity Series will do him well. Um, I think it's going to be hard for him not to make the playoffs this season. How far he goes in those playoffs, I don't know. But uh, I think a win is is realistic for Herbs this season, and I think that's why I can see him being that bounce-back driver in 2021. I got to say, it's a, it's a decent pick when you look at the situation he's stepping into. Um, I, I really don't know what to expect from him this year in terms of um, where he's going to be at because I look at, the, I look at the grid and there's a lot of really strong drivers there. It's not going to be a piece of cake. Um, know. And you know what? Oh, fair play to the guy if he does pull it off. Uh, I just don't think it's overly likely. When I look at mine, though, um, I went with a name that on the surface you might go, how, well, how the hell is this guy going to bounce back? He had a pretty solid season I last an, year. I have an idea of who you might pick, but I, I'm curious. I'm going with Justin right. Allgaier here. Oh, it's not who I okay. okay, I'm going with Justin Allgaier. He had three wins last year, which when you look at the win total, you look where he finished in the championship. He finished second. You're like, how the hell is this guy going to bounce back? He was really great last year. Let's dive into the numbers a little bit more. 19 top 10s versus 24 of the year prior. His average finishing yeah. position dropped four and a half places. This was not the consistent threat week in, week out, uh, Justin Allgaier, that he, we've seen in the past, especially when you look back to like 2018 when he won five races and still had the 24 top 10s. Um, I think this season, Justin Allgaier is going to have a bit of a resurgence here. Uh, I think he's going to be kind of that running mate for much of the season uh, with Austin centric in terms of being the kind of the guys that run the show for most of the season. I think we might see all get back to three, four 
maybe even five wins this season. And I think he's mm-hmm. going to be right there as the championship favorite going into Phoenix in a different way that it was this year. This year, he was one of the favorites because you look at Phoenix and you're like, this is a track he's really good at, even though he hasn't been great all season you got to think that he's going to show up at Phoenix. I think this season we're going to go into Phoenix and it's going to be Sindrick who's been great all year and won it last year and Allgaier who's been great this season, but that's, his, that's kind of his playing ground. That's his, one of his best tracks. So uh, maybe a bit of a stranger pick for bounce back guy, given the fact Definitely. that he finished second last year and had three wins Led on the, the season. Most laps. <laughs> but I think that Justin Allgaier is going to have a fantastic year this year. He's going to lead the way for junior motorsports. So he's my bounce back driver. Bit of a weird pick on that one though. Allgaier is an interesting one because when you look at the numbers, like you said, he has some really great high numbers, but then his DNFs is at eight DNFs from last season. Like he was super good. got 12 stage wins last season, second most in the series as well. And then he faded off in that last stage, had some problems and then just didn't finish well. Exactly. And, but he ran well for the, about 70% of the race. And then yeah. that last 30% is where he was missing it. And uh, that's kind of what it came down to at Phoenix in that championship finale as well. He couldn't hold off Austin Sindrick there and couldn't catch him there on the fresh tires as well. So uh, it is what it is when it comes to Allgaier. He's just been that mainstay in the Xfinity series for so long. Now he had that brief stint with Turner Scott Motorsports in the yeah. cup series way back when, but he's always been in the Xfinity series, it seems, and been in that championship fight year in and year out. And he's still waiting for that first Xfinity series championship. So we'll see if I, uh, out of curiosity, who did you think season. that I was going to say? Harrison Burton, mm, um, okay. because of just based off of where he finished in the playoffs last season and being knocked out in that first round. Uh, and he, he finished eighth in the point standings kind of thing. So I thought that he's due for a bounce back, if you want to call it. Yeah. But um, yeah. I thought about I, him I, a little I, I bit, but I see that. I see our... Burton more as like progression of a prospect than it is a bounce back. Bounce so back. I thought about him a little bit, but I went with a, a bit of a weird pick there for Allgaier. I think he's going to have a really strong year. I think it proves just how tough it was to pr- to take a bounce back driver this season because you kind of expect in some guys that yeah, maybe yeah. were poor last season. I Ross Chastain was in the series last year. You'd I would take him as my bounce back driver this season just based off of the no wins. But with Chase Briscoe and him moving up, it kind of leaves a little bit to be had there in that middle pack. And yeah, there's not a to ton just of stability of- in Xfinity. Obviously, Cup there's the most stability, but in trucks even there's a lot more guys that stay there for multiple years or are veterans of that series than there are in Xfinity, especially at the top end. So it, it, definitely a bit difficult to, to kind of narrow down some candidates for bounce back, but I think we got two interesting ones on our hands. Two opposite ends of the spectrum with both of ours <laughs> yeah. there uh, yeah. for, for bounce back <laughs> driver of the year. Let's move on to the next one. Rookie of the year. Not too many choices for this one. Um, there's what, there only four, three on the short list, I think. Four, so. Three technically, yeah. Uh, we'll go with three. So the three... Candidates are Ryan Vargas for JD Motorsports in the number six, Jordan Anderson for Jordan Anderson Racing in the number 31. He's moving up to the Xfinity Series full-time this year. Let's not forget that. We talked about that on a recent episode. And then Jade Buford for Big Machine Racing Team. We talked about him on a recent episode as well. All three of these guys have become new (laughs) Rookie of the Year candidates within the last month. So uh, (laughs) we'll see how they all fare coming into this season. But who have you got for Rookie of the Year in 2021? Yeah, it's a very strange one here because you've got only one team that's got kind of a past history that you can really look at because Jordan Anderson's mm-hmm. team is brand new to Xfinity here. The big machine is is brand new to the series as well. And Ryan Vargas, we kind of have a little bit to go off of from the end of last season. And it's a team that has been kind of a mainstay in the series for a long time. So I went with the safe pick on this one for rookie of the year. I'm going to take Ryan Vargas just because we know what to expect from that team. Jay Buford could be a backmarker with that team. We don't know what to expect from them. Jordan Anderson. Right. There's some interesting stuff with that announcement with the ECR engines and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's been a decent uh, kind of mid-pack guy between the, the true contenders and the true uh, back of the pack there in trucks. So maybe he steps in and is a little bit better than that, maybe exceeds expectations. But I went with the safe one on this one. I, I'm a big Brian Vargas guy, of course. Uh, I hope the TikTok car makes some appearances throughout the season. Um, but yeah, he's going to be my pick for rookie of the year. Not a, not a ton of options for this one, though. No TikTok shirt once again when we're talking about Ryan Vargas, oh. Kyle. I missed the opportunity again. Okay, uh, I, I need to uh, think more about these before I go into shows. Uh, wardrobe is yeah. a huge element to these yeah. episodes. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, you remember, know what? I got the Chili Pepper shirt on, so. 
I'll take it. It's a good second option there. Uh, I went with Ryan Vargas as well for Rookie of the Year. I I just couldn't any, until I see the thirty one on track. I don't know what to expect from them. They That's could, exactly it for me. I think that Anderson is probably the best chance to contend for it, but I just don't have that. Like I exactly. I I need to know what I'm working with there. So yeah, I I don't. Like when I look at what he did in the truck series, like he's a good driver. I just don't know if he'll against the mid pack battle in the Xfinity series it's that so we're going to see this there. year. Yeah, if Jordan Anderson can punch a hole through that and break through and compete with the likes of JD Motorsports, uh, Jeremy Clements, our Motorsports as well this year. There's going to be some bigger names, Brandon Brown as well, down in that pack. So I think it'll be a little bit tough for him to break through in this first season, especially since they put this together. It seems pretty late in the going. So I'm going to go with the, the team that has the most foundation yeah. been in the sport for a while and ryan vargas had some moments last season where he ran well on occasion hence the tiktok shirt purchase for kyle <laughs> so uh yeah ryan vargas is uh, gets the sweep for rookie of the year honors in 2021 for the xfinity series we're into the final little bit here kyle the regular season yes. champ so the after 24 uh 24 races i get no it's not 24 races it's 26 races 26 races Correct. Twenty seven races. Is it twenty five? Twenty five. I can't. Maybe I can't. Thirty four. I can't remember how many races they. So then I think it would be thirty four. Then or sorry, if it's thirty four races in the so year. So take away seven. Sh- so it's twenty seven. Okay. Twenty seven. So twenty seven regular season races. Who's going right, to come up on top for, in that? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I forgot about have the, the whole playoff thing. Exactly. It's, it's all confusing here. Uh, but regular season champ, I'm going with the guy that has the most wins. Austin Cindric's going to yeah. get the honor for me this year. Um, it just seems like the easy pick, the no-brainer pick. But when you get the most wins this season, I think uh, you kind of expect that. And I'm not saying he's going to get all seven wins before the playoffs start. I think that would be a little bit too insane. But I think you'll get four, five wins potentially before the playoffs start. And then it gets into crunch time during those uh, – seven races to end the season by Austin Sindrick. No brainer here for me. I'm going with him as the regular season champ. Yeah. Easy pick on this one for me as well. He won it last year. I have no reason to doubt him to go back exactly. again. Uh, Chase Briscoe wasn't here to kind of steal away some of those wins as well. Uh, it's a deeper field. So he's going to be, uh, have more competition for those, but I think that Penske is still the number one team. I think Cindric is probably the number one driver here as well. Um, and I have no reason to doubt them uh, coming into the season. So yeah, uh, both of us agree winning as driver. Both of us agree for regular season champ too. For sure. Let's get into the playoff drivers. 12 drivers okay. a piece here. Let's Not too it. many options to kind of choose from here. There's about 14, say, 15 if you're looking. I think we might have the exact same playoff grid. We probably do. If I'm yeah. looking at it in all honesty, I, I would be shocked if we yeah. honestly don't. But, let me let me uh, try and find a pen here so I can grab your pen. Keep track here. Yeah. Okay. okay. All righty. Uh, Austin Cedric, no brainer. Check him off the list. Uh, yeah. Justin Our, Allgaier. A regular season champion is in fact making the playoffs. Yeah. He is. He did. He. Uh, I would be shocked if he didn't. <laughs> it would be <laughs> some pretty big biggest story uh, of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Justin Allgaier, check him off the list. Yep. AJ Allmendinger, check him off the list. Yep. Harrison Burton, check him off the list. Yep. <laughs> Noah Gregson, check him off the yep. list. Brandon Jones, check him off the list. Yep. Okay, now you take the next six. Okay. Justin Haley. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll skip that one for now. Riley Herbst. Yep. Okay. Myatt Snyder. Yep. Okay. Jeb Burton. Yep. Okay. Daniel Hemrick. Yep. Okay, good. I was going to freak. Which brings us to number 12. And I think we should pause here and at least have the discussion. Uh, Justin Haley as well. Or, uh, yeah, I said Justin Haley. It was the first one Did I you? said. Okay, so, sorry. Sorry. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, the last one. Number 12. <laughs> we went through that pretty quick, eh? Number t- yeah, number 12. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the names that you had on the short list for this one? Brandon Brown, Ryan Sieg, and that was it. Michael Annette wasn't on your short list? No. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Michael Annette was at least on my short list um, because it is still junior motorsports, but I think that Travis Mack moving up to cup thing is going to be a legit impact. 
Fair enough. I don't think he makes the playoffs. I don't have him in. I don't have him in either. Um, I got Ryan C. <laughs> I have Ryan Seek Clean too. sweep, I told you. I told you. I, knew, I, I figured it would be. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Brown, as much as the story was such a great one last year, yeah. it might be just a bit too much with the RCR coming in, RCR car coming in this season, along with that third um, full-time entry for Colleague. Yep. That was the deal breaker, really. And uh, yep. I think they're going to be Seag looking on the, the outside. with the expected uh, improvement as well with switching yes. over to Ford, so... Yeah, yeah, I would be shocked if Ryan Sieg doesn't make the playoffs, in all honesty. I would, um, too. Yeah. But, it, you know, Michael Annette, he did win the season opener a couple of seasons ago at Daytona, so he could win Gotta his race. I love those win, win his Daytona way races, am I right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't forget those. Um, uh, I wish I yeah, could. I, think, I wish I could. <laughs> we, I, wish, I wish we could, too. But, yeah, it's a clean sweep there. I don't think – not much There's to dive any argument, into. Really. It's pretty straightforward. Annette would be the one. Would be, There's be one looking spot, at, I think, that's up for grabs. So Yeah. That will, I, yeah, no, I'm not even going to say Mike Snyder's spot's up for grabs because I think that the, the, I think he showed enough the, last year with that RCR. So yeah, 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 exactly. So the midfield battle, though, the ones that we most are likely yeah. likely won't see in the playoffs is going to be pretty cool to watch as well. Hopefully, the broadcast does point them yeah. out, like we've talked about on this I'm show. I'm going to see if but, we can find a way to kind of key in on that as well throughout the year. Okay. Okay, you got a little bit of an interesting segment for back know. marker of the maybe, year. Maybe just mixing up like Kush's threes or something. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we'll see. okay. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Interesting little tease there for the upcoming tease, season. Yes. Kyle's got some things in the I works. The, the, the wheels are turning. There's no okay. smoke yet. The brain's but tingling. Turning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get into the final two categories, Kyle. The big ones Championship yes. Four and the champion. Okay. Um, Austin Cindric, I have in the championship four. I'm pretty sure you do. As yes, well. I do. Okay. Now it's up for debate, to be honest. I think I, so. I'd say from here. I think so. Um, yeah. Because there is two through eight, I'd say, is probably you could go any other way. Yeah. If you want, however you want to look at it. Um, the guys that we're not going to be putting in the championship four, Maya Snyder. Yeah. I think, I think there's eight candidates uh, out of that playoff to, I'd to say make so the, the final four. Yeah. Um, who are your eight candidates then? We'll just get into that. Who would let's you say the, would be your the, eight? the ones that we don't consider. Uh, okay. You mentioned Myatt Snyder there. I don't think that yeah. the RCR car is going to make the uh, final four. Ryan Sieg, unfortunately, until we see what the Ford's yeah. like on He on can make track. round of eight, but championship four is too much. Yeah. Um, Jeb Burton as well for me. I think that's a bit much. I think playoffs yeah. is pretty pretty comfortable. That 10 car didn't win with Ross Chastain in it, so I don't know if Jeb Burton can do it. Yeah, and, and he wasn't spectacular in the eight car uh, in the eight car last year as well he was decent but nothing yeah. spectacular um riley and herbs. i'll go with riley herbs for this one still okay riley herbs yeah. is my last one as well so okay yeah i'm, I'm not going to be crazy to say that daniel hamrick is going to do worse than riley herbs but i think that in terms of the playoffs i'd see hamrick do better okay. than than herbs so yeah those are my four <laughs> but hamrick will well is technically my fifth so i get have seven i don't think hamrick's gonna make the championship four but okay okay i think right. i think any of those top eight could so exactly so we're down to Algar, Almendinger, burton gregson jones and haley and then for yourself you've got hamrick but you've already teased that he's not going to be making yeah. it so he was close uh, but got... i just don't i think by the end of the season he's going to need the wins to be in the championship four and i don't think he's going to have those so so we've got three spots for six drivers. We uh, yeah, yeah, we do. I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be completely honest. My last spot is up for grabs right now. So um, honestly, mine I, might be too. I have a name written down here, but I might change it. So okay, do you want to take this next one? Yeah, here? sure. You, you, your second you, one? you started off with Austin Cindric and a very good one to start with. I'm gonna go with this guy that I took as my bounce back driver. I think he's gonna be fantastic this year. I think he's gonna be right up there with Cindric for much of the year. Won't have the the, the crazy win total maybe, um, but he's gonna be much more consistently in the conversation this year, week in week out. Justin Allgaier, pretty easy pick for me to to make it to Phoenix. Okay, uh, I'll wait on Allgaier maybe okay. a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, I'll see on him. My second guy, and I feel pretty confident about this one. It's a guy that we'd mentioned, or I mentioned at least. I made a bold prediction on him. Harrison Burton's going to be in my championship four this year. Um, Me too. I, ha I had him making it just based off of the fact I had him going to the 11 car for next season if Hamlin <laughs> did end up leaving. I think that would be stupid if I didn't have him making the championship <sighs> four. 
But last year he got so snake bitten in that first yeah. round. He got totally screwed over. And I think he's going to come back with maybe five wins this season or something like that. Cause he had four last year. I don't think five is out of the George question Gibbs for the for crying out loud. So that 20 car yeah. was exceptional with, with Christopher Bell. Yeah. So I think Harrison Burton could be up there in that top three in points this year. That's the kind yeah. of thing I'm looking for, for that 20 car. And I think he's going to have enough playoff points. If he does fall through in the playoffs, a one race here or there, he has the momentum to kind of recover from that. And we saw what he did at Texas to Noah Gregson. He had no problem. Pressure- on him and he just went exactly Harrison Burton is definitely one to keep your eye on especially in that last round where he's proven he can win on them and uh we'll see if Harrison Burton does come through but I have him making the championship for as do you yeah no Harrison Burton I really like this year I think there's going to be a lot of progression from him coming into this season uh and yeah uh, when I look at it here is Joe Gibbs racing so uh, last year was the anomaly. They had a very young lineup. They didn't have the high-end talent like they've had in the past. Um, and so stepping into this season, I think, yeah, he, he, Burton takes that next step. Uh, he wins multiple races. I, I think he's going to have much more comfortable uh, points position in the playoffs. I think he's going to be there in that round of eight. And then, of course, we saw it this time around. He's fantastic in that round. And I think, yeah, he's going to book his ticket maybe with a win, maybe with two again. Who knows? But – Exactly. I like him there as well, which brings us to the I last got my one. third. Or, oh, sorry, you've got, got your third. third still, so you go ahead. You, you jumped the gun here, yeah. all right? Well, I'm sorry. Um, I forgot that you don't have Allgaier. Yeah. Okay. Or at yes. all. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, my third pick here is, is my third definite one, so I'll, I'll wait to see what you do for your fourth one. But my third definite one here is Noah Gregson. Uh, I have okay. him making the championship for this year. He was so close last year, one corner away at Texas. And he got blown out of the water. And I think he ran well apart from that this past season. Homestead, he looked fantastic in both races. And he fell short in both of them. I think Noah Gregs could definitely be one to keep your eye on this season. He's been – each season over his NASCAR career, he's gotten better each time each season has passed. And I think this season he takes that next step. I'm looking at him and Harrison Burton to be almost neck and neck the entire season in terms of performance. I think they're very comparable. Former KBM guys that have moved up to the Xfinity Series had a rough cup first season to an extent. Uh, but now I think they take that next step forward this season. And I feel pretty confident that Noah Gregson can put it together, be a little bit more mature, have a little bit more of a level head this time around, not burn too many bridges as the season goes along. He is a feisty guy. He does get behind the wheel and he, he has a lot of fire underneath him, but I think he may have that little bit more of a level head this season and go into the playoffs with a better mentality and a better strategy to get himself to that championship four. That's my third guy going to Phoenix. I've gone a little bit conservative with some of these picks. So I had to have one bold one mixed in here. Woo-hoo! I don't have Noah Gregson in my okay, championship okay. four here. Um, look, I think he's, I think he's great. I had him moving up to cup with, Chip Ganassi but similarly to the guy that Chip Ganassi got from Xfinity this year I don't have him making the championship four um <laughs> I think that look I, I love his fiery style it brings a lot of entertainment to to every single Xfinity race but we saw it kind of tag him a few times last year and it, unless he he kind of reins that in a little bit it might cost him again come that round of eight I feel good about him making it to the round of eight but anything from there I think is all up in the air because as we said I think that there's eight legitimate contenders that could go out and either point their way in or win their way in um, I feel very confident yeah. about that group of eight and any mix of those uh, I could feel good about making it I, Brandon Jones could easily go out and, and point yes. his way in or, or win his way in uh, Daniel Hamrick I feel better about than you do uh, and then the the couple of colleague cars as well um, Justin Haley was in the championship for last year and he's a young guy with the improvement that team's been consistently improving as well it's competitive so i'll get to my fourth and final championship for contender here i think this driver is going to uh, pick up a couple of wins over the season i think they're going to have uh some decent playoff points banked up but i'm looking at that last race at martinsville as potentially being a win and in scenario for this guy and I think, you know what, it's, and we're not doing race winner picks or anything like that, but I feel good about this guy going in in that situation, winning and booking his ticket to Phoenix. My, my last championship four guy is AJ Allmendinger. I'm going bold with it. I'm saying, I'm saying the dinger comes back full time with colleague and uh, he's going to make it all the way to the championship race. Um, 
look, I, I think colleague has just had that internal progression year over year over year um, where I, I think that they've got a car in this championship for, we saw them kind of sneak their way in last year with some other people having some issues. I think they take another step this year. Justin Haley's going to be right in that mix as well, but I'm looking at AJ as the consistent guy over the season. He's going to, he showed last year with colleague that he's a contender on the ovals as well, which is, I think is a big thing. We know his prowess on the road course. He's going to be making some uh, starts for them in cup as well. I think we're going to see a rejuvenated AJ Allmendinger full season. I've got him in the championship four. Interesting. 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 It's coming down to two people for this one for me. Okay. And I've made my decision, but I'll tell you who yes. they were between. Talk me through your thoughts. Justin Allgaier and AJ Allmendinger were okay. my, my two okay. for this last one. And no Justin I'm Haley going... returning, eh? Okay. No, I don't have Justin Haley. Um, I think Gregson and Burton edge him out this year yeah. in terms of that. So I think Haley got kind of lucky making it into that championship four last yeah. year when Gregson had a bad race there. I think it was at Kansas. And then he had two great races after that and he just couldn't yep. follow through. Yep. But for the two, Allgaier was a tough one because he's just so consistent and just so steady throughout the entire season. He's kind of always in the mix. They're getting those stage points here, but he kind of chokes in the playoffs sometimes. And that was a little bit of something I was factoring in. But then Almondinger coming into his first season here full-time in the Xfinity Series, how will he fare in being there every single weekend, maybe making a rivalry here or there because he's not afraid to do something like that. But I, I'm going with A.J. Almondinger okay. as my fourth guy. I think Justin Haley uh, – no, not, Justin Algar, excuse me, misses the championship for this season. And I think Gregson takes that spot over there at Junior Motorsports as that lead guy this year. That's why I have him in there. And I'm going with A.J. Allmendinger because I think he is the second best all-rounded guy to Austin Cindric this season. Be good on road courses. Superb on the super speedways with that colleague package that they have. Mile and a half, he proved that he could win it there at Atlanta last season. And he's really good at Martinsville. I think he's got – he's the entire package. And when I look at the playoff races, there's the Roval, where he's he's very good at, obviously, the road course king there. Won the damn thing. And Exactly. In the wet, nonetheless. So I can imagine what he'd do in the dry. And then you've got Talladega in there as well, where I think he could do well. It's always a crapshoot there at Talladega. You can never really predict the winner. But when you look at what Colic has done these past yeah. couple of seasons, specifically Justin Haley – Elmendinger is right there pushing their guys to the win or getting taken out in that last corner thing with Chastain <laughs> or something like that, right? But he's always there with those colleague guys, and I think Elmendinger is just going to have enough. And that last round specifically, I know there's two mile and a half, but I think he will have uh, built up enough playoff yeah. points by that part where if he struggles on maybe one or even both to an extent to have a lesser top 10 finish or has a top 15 finish on one of them, he can re recover from that have a good Martinsville and then make his yeah. way into that championship four. That's what I've gone. I've gone with. Yeah, I'm going he with was, my on this he was one. battling Burton for the lead uh, or for the win, I should say before he cut a tire there at the end. So exactly. He, he can go the extra step too far. I will say that with Almondinger, he may yeah. push it just that yeah. little bit too far. And then he just takes him out of contention. But if he goes in there, he's a very mature driver. Now he's been in there. He, he, we saw what he did at the Rolex 24 this past weekend as well. He did a great, great job for the, uh, the 60 entry. So yep. I could see him doing something similar to that this season. I think he's just got a better head on his shoulders now than when he was in the cup series. He's taken that step back and he's realized that this is a place he wants to be at. And I think he hasn't really put a foot wrong when he's been in college, to be honest, other than maybe one or two instances here or there, but yeah, Austin Cindric, Harrison Burton, Noah Gregson, and AJ Allmendinger on my championship four for 2020. 21 Allgaier is the big one to miss out yeah and I trade out Gregson for Allgaier so still very similar we got just the one trade there um but it all comes down to this championship do we go bold with it and go anti-Cendric yeah. or do we go safe with it and go with Cendric I I still don't know what I want to do here but um I'll, I'll let you start okay. for this one if you if you okay. like if you like no I'll go first okay. with this one that is that is totally fine um <sighs> It's so difficult to kind of pick this one because it's just a one-off race. And if you just get yep. the setup wrong, we've literally you could be gone over eight. So <laughs> But that was championship weekend. Maybe we can get the preseason prediction. Oh, right? when it's so, even more wide open. Yeah. Exactly. We have a limited maybe, maybe to four we guys and we can't even do it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. But Austin Sindrick is going to be my champion okay. this season okay. for the NASCAR Xfinity series. When I look at that weekend now, even if they were to mess up coming off of the trailer, 
they have practice that weekend. And that is going to be crucial for that championship weekend. Something that we didn't have this past season. So you had to unload well and you had to go on the track and what you had is what you had. But if any of these guys mess it up coming off the trailer, they can actually have a chance to get the car set up properly and have it to their liking. And I think that's going to be huge for Austin Sindrick here. If they can nail the setup, if Penske has the opportunity to tinker with that car over the entire weekend, that's just going to give them an added bonus, in my opinion. So Austin Sindrick, he proved me wrong, honestly, with the Phoenix performance this past season. I didn't know if he was actually going to win the race. I thought Allgaier, just based off of the previous experience there, he could win it, but... Cindric just seems like he's on a different level right now. And Team Penske's on a different level with that 22 car. I just can't bet against him right now. I would love to put Gregson or Burton ahead of him to win the championship in Almondinger. I just can't right now. I got to go with Cindric. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking the same way for you as you the entire way. But you know what? We had the same championship pick for the trucks years. I'm not doing it again. I okay. had him as my bounce back guy, so I might as well go bold with it the Ooh. entire way. Justin Allgaier wins the 2021 Xfinity Series Championship for me. Uh, look, I think it's going to be a showdown between him and Cindric come Phoenix there. It's a track that obviously Cindric showed very well at last year. Allgaier is one of the best uh, in his entire repertoire. And I think it's going to be a great battle between the two. The added practice and everything, I think is going to be a big storyline to watch as well. Uh, but for me, I've got one junior motorsports car there as well. So it's going to be all the eggs in that one basket for them. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great championship battle. I originally had Cindric written down, but it was very close for me between the two. So I'll go with the, uh, the bold pick here with Justin Allgaier. Fair play. I, I respect that quite a bit, that you didn't go with the same one. It, it's the easy pick, Cindric. We went John Hunter Nemechek in that past one, I couldn't bet against right? my guy, John yeah, Hunter. Just... I guess I got to go against Austin here. Yeah, that is a tough one, man. I, I, I would totally respect that. Like, If he spoke Austin I... with an O-N, I'd still bet on him, but it's the I-N, so... Mm, yeah you can't go wrong with the in austin uh <laughs> but yeah that does it for the nascar xfinity series preview yeah, Kyle, we got all the categories done very fun one it's not as competitive as maybe we would have liked in terms of that, that it's not uh, what i'll say is it's playoff, not as but, deep is what i'll say yeah. because the truck series has word. like what we had like 18 19 trucks on our short list for 10 playoff yeah. spots we had 13 14 here for uh xfinity when it's a 12th uh car field but yeah. uh, that aside, I think when you, inside that 12 when you look inside that 12, extremely competitive. When you look outside that 12 as well, those mid-pack battles are extremely fun to keep an eye on. Every single week, it's a different car that's kind of at the top of that. Um, and yeah. this year, nobody was expecting Brandon Brown to potentially be a playoff guy. And all of a sudden, he, he goes and shows really well all season long, and he gets his way in. We could have another one of those stories this year. Um, uh, it's going to be great to watch. We got Landon Castle back in the field as well with JD Motorsports. We've seen him yeah. sneak his way into a top 12 position before. Um, we, we There's a lot of competitive cars in that mid-pack. I'm excited to watch that. But those th those top end there's just so many fun names this year like Almondinger all year long Hemrick's in a, in his own guard Jeb Burton is getting a chance here with colleague as well there's a lot of fun storylines even though it isn't as deep as the truck series there's still a lot of fun stuff to watch in this season it's a blast from the past season it feel, feels like <laughs> it, it, with a lot of these guys and uh like Brett Moffat is well done here not running for points that's for right, full time right. in the Infinity series but Santino Ferrucci uh, as well with Sam Hunt's gonna be a fun guy to keep an eye on Exactly. Making that shift over from IndyCar to uh, the NASCAR side of things. There's yeah. a lot of different storylines, that 54 car going for the uh, owner's points oh, if they can get the funding together as, as well. well. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't go for most wins this season for that 54 because you do have that cap limit yeah. with the five uh, starts. So, But that's going to be uh, embedded in there as well. I'm sure the 54 car will sneak multiple wins this season away from the competition of the Xfinity Series regulars, the big one. That's going to be the one you keep your eye on, of course. Um, but there's just so much competition there in that one to eight range. And even though the 12 that are going to make it, there's a lot of interchangeability yeah. between all of them. One guy could finish first one week that could finish 12th the next week. It's just that upside down. Yeah. One final thing I think we need to do here. How close is Kyle Busch to that magic 100? He's three away. Three wins away. He needs 98, 99 and a hundred. So one last thing we need to do here. Does Mr. Bush reach oh. number 100 this season and i'll start with it because i'm tossing it on you late 
Oh. I think he got – I think you know where I'm going. I'm going to say he does not hit the Magic 100 this season. Shoot. When you look at the schedule as well, he, he's strategic with it this year. What, it's three tracks that are new to the Cup Series schedule, I think it is? Atlanta, Coda, Texas, Nashville, Road America. Exactly. So he's strategic with it. It's going to help out his Cup more than it is his Xfinity chase for 100 here. So I, I'll say that he gets within one. I'll say he wins two of those. He gets the 99. He doesn't get Magic 100 this year. Oh God! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, I'm man? Sorry. I'm sorry. I had That's to. That's brutal. I had to. Does he get three? Oh God! Come on, I know you I want to. I don't think. He's, yes, he does. He gets. He gets the hundred. He gets to hundred. Atlanta, Texas, Nashville. He can't. I don't think he'll win the road courses, but he'll win the three main ones: Texas, Atlanta, and Nashville. I think he gets to 100 right on the number this season. And I think this may be the last season we see Kyle Busch in the Infinity Series. Who knows? Um, I hope that's not the case, man. I'll be in tears when that does happen. But um, I'm yeah, still skeptical. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still skeptical, I'm, I'm, but we'll see. Fair enough. Yeah, but I, I think he's a man of his word. And I think he uh, – we'll see what he does come – 100 wins time hopefully that is this season just for his sake to check that off the calendar um check <laughs> that off the bucket list. <laughs> not really i'd love to see him race that's forever fair, in this fair. series that's but fair. um yeah it, I, it, that's a tough one to end the, that's probably the toughest one i had to pick uh, the whole episode there thanks for that Kyle. i just thought Appreciate of that now it. I, you know it's a fun one to toss in so it is a good one you mentioned Especially the in this series i had to, i had to Fair play. Thank you for uh, making me put my guy, put my my fandom right on the spot, and uh, I'm oh. sticking with my guy till the very end. So Atlanta, Texas, and Nashville. I think he uh, smashes the guitar for that 100th win. If he smashes Nashville, the guitar, so. you're going to get a very angry Kyle on that next episode. So which Kyle? Oh, he, Kyle. Me, oh, yeah. me, yeah. not yeah, yeah. Okay. not Mr. Bush over there. Okay, there, no, I hope he does, and I hope he cherishes that thing if they do to the guitar again. <laughs> I think um, he learned his but, lesson. I think he did as well, but yeah, very fun episode there. What yes. a way to end it there uh, with that, with the, with the great uh, last minute addition <laughs> to the categories. But uh, yeah, it's been a great one. Lots of previews that we've done already. And then now uh, we've got one more in store for you with the NASCAR side of things, the cup series coming up in the next one. Uh, that's going to be we coming out. One more show before on this two- car's on track. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, that is nuts. That is nuts. And as a little bit of a tease for the upcoming week, that is for next week, we're going to have four episodes next week of the green flag. That's a big one. It's a big one for us, especially during the time that we have right now with a lot of schoolwork on the go, but (laughs) this is the biggest week really in the NASCAR season. We've got everything kicking off the clash Daytona 500 qualifying the duels, trucks xfinity and of course the daytona 500 to all wrap it up next week so we got that all on store we'll have an episode next week to preview the nascar cup series season before the clash and then we'll also do a recap of the duels daytona 500 qualifying and the clash we'll also be bringing back our nascar fantasy previews for the upcoming season we've got one more episode until that comes back where hopefully i can come back and be the uh two-time champion once the season is done but i'm sure kyle's gonna have a lot to say don't forget don't forget the uh, the last super speedway where my randomizer beat you so I know, but I'll let the randomizer beat me on that. That was a great storyline, and uh, <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. Right, does he pull it up for the Daytona 500? Remains to be seen, but uh, yeah, no going to be a fun one to no keep. Spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, going to be a fun one to keep on track of that the entire <laughs> season now, uh, with hopefully no COVID interruptions as the season goes along. But four episodes next week. We'll also be doing a special one after the Saturday uh, Xfinity Series race, where we get the trucks in Xfinity previewed and, and reviewed. And then we all will have a uh, kind of night reaction of the Daytona 500 that will go up on the Monday morning. So going to be a busy, 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 oh, busy, yeah. ne- uh, about 10 days or so, but it's going to be well worth it. We're going to be very excited. The first Daytona 500 that we're really getting to do on a proper level, yes. I think, uh, for, for everything that we've done yes. for this show over the past year and a half or so. So very excited for that. So make sure you stay tuned over the next week. You've got tons of content coming your way here at The Green Flag. Speaking of at The Green Flag, make sure to go follow us on Instagram at The Green Flag. Follow us on Twitter at The Green Flag Pod. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it as well. All the links to our social channels will be in the description of the video. But for this episode... I've been Lucas Wacker. He's been Kyle Cushman. Signing off for now, we will talk to you on the next episode to preview the NASCAR Cup Series 2021 season.